Greetings, subscribers! Adventures in Babysitting is a fun teen comedy from 1987 about a teenage girl who sees her Friday night somehow turn from babysitting in the suburbs of Chicago to actually going to the big city of Chicago where she ends up being chased by criminals the entire night. I've read online there was a 2016 remake of this movie, but I never saw the reboot. And many people say the 2011 movie The Sitter with Jonah Hill is more or less a reboot of Adventures in Babysitting. Although I don't think that's technically official. Anyway, today I'd like to tell you seven pieces of trivia about Adventures in Babysitting that you might not already know. So let me get started. Number one. The main character of Chris Parker is played by actress Elizabeth Shue, who had previously played the role of Allie Mills in the classic 1984 movie The Karate Kid, and went on to play the role of Marty's girlfriend Jennifer Parker in Back to the Future Parts 2 and 3. So in both Adventures in Babysitting and the Back to the Future movies, she played a character with the last name Parker. And in 1995, she starred in a movie called Leaving Las Vegas, in which she played a prostitute. She received an Oscar nomination for a performance in this film. Number two. The character of Sarah is played by an actress named Maya Bruton, who had a small role in the first Back to the Future movie as Sally Baines, the younger sister of Lorraine. Now, you might be saying, hey, wasn't Elizabeth Shue also in Back to the Future? And the answer is, Technically, no. In the first Back to the Future movie, the role of Jennifer Parker was played by an actress named Claudia Wells. However, Wells did not return for the role in the sequels. Elizabeth Shue took over the role for the sequels. So the simple point is, Maya Bruton and Elizabeth Shue were not in any of the same Back to the Future movies. You might also want to take note that Bruton made Back to the Future in 1985 before she made Adventures in Babysitting, and Shu did Back to the Future 2 in 1989 and Part 3 in 1990 after she did Adventures in Babysitting. So the point is, at the time these two actresses were making the movie Adventures in Babysitting, they did not yet realize they would both be involved with the Back to the Future franchise. I also want to quickly mention that if you look at Bruton's scene in Back to the Future, one of her brothers, Milton Baines, is played by actor Jason Hervey, who is probably best known for playing the role of Wayne Arnold on the classic TV series The Wonder Years. Number 3. The character of Brad Anderson is played by actor Keith Coogan. You can note that a few years later he played a major role in the 1991 movie Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, another teen comedy about babysitting. But I personally found it more interesting to learn that he is the grandson of actor Jackie Coogan who played the role of Uncle Fester on the classic TV show The Addams Family, and had much earlier played the title role in the movie The Kid, a silent comedy in which he co-starred alongside Charlie Chaplin. Number 4. The role of Daryl Coopersmith is played by actor Anthony Rapp, who, if you look on his IMDb page, you'll see he's been in tons of other movies. But I'll just note that he had a part in the movie Dazed and Confused, a very popular movie made in 1993, but set in the 1970s. Number 5. One of the producers of Adventures in Babysitting is Deborah Hill, who also produced many other movies I like a lot. But here I want to mention that she produced the classic 1978 movie Halloween. You're probably thinking that Halloween and Adventures in Babysitting are two completely different kinds of movies. And you're right. One is horror, the other is comedy. However, both these movies are about a teenage girl expecting to have an average night babysitting in the suburbs and watching the night turn horribly wrong. Also, if you look very carefully in the background of one scene, you'll see the movie Halloween playing on TV. Number 6. This one might be a stretch, but with all the popularity of Thor and the Avengers movies right now, one technically could make an argument that Adventures in Babysitting might have had the first ever live action appearance of Thor. The character of Sarah is a big fan of Thor comics, and she wears a Thor helmet and carries a toy hammer with her the whole movie. And there's one scene in which she goes to an auto garage and we see a muscular man with long blonde hair and a hammer, 
who Sarah believes to be Thor, but the others believe to just be a mechanic with long hair. I'd say they're almost surely right to believe he's not Thor. But I guess maybe there's some slim possibility he is. And since most fans will tell you Thor's first ever live action appearance was in the made-for-TV movie The Incredible Hulk Returns, which first aired in 1988, the year after Adventures in Babysitting was released, that would mean that if you want to believe this somehow is the real Thor, then you would have to say it's Thor's first ever live action appearance. I can also mention that this actor playing Thor is Vincent Onofrio, who went on to play Daredevil's arch enemy Kingpin in the popular Daredevil show on Netflix. And finally, number seven. Many of the Chicago scenes were indeed filmed in the city of Chicago. Great city, I've been there. However, the suburban scenes were actually filmed in the suburbs outside the city of Toronto in Canada. This is the house briefly seen at the beginning as Chris Parker's house. It's located in the town of North York, which is about a 20 minute drive from the heart of Toronto. The house obviously had quite a few renovations since the movie was filmed. The biggest difference is this addition over the garage. But also notice when the movie was made, the house had an all white facade. Now, the majority of the house is covered by brick except for the new addition over the garage. These columns outside the door were not there when the movie was made, and neither were these attic windows. When I was there, there was a for sale sign outside the house. As I stepped back to get some good angles for the shot, I stepped on the front lawn of this house directly across the street, and as you can see, it's a very wealthy looking house. It appears to have been made fairly recently, I'm guessing it was made after the movie was shot. And if you look at some other shots of the street, it looks a little more like average suburbs. I'm guessing these houses were there when the movie was filmed. Then we see the character of Chris take a short drive to the Anderson residence where Brad and Sarah live. That location has a GPS address that's technically inside the city of Toronto, although about a 20 minute drive from the heart of Toronto and only about an eight minute drive from the location used for Chris Parker's house in North York. Here's that house in October of 2019, still very recognizable as the house from the movie. But when I looked at the house directly next door on the right, it was another surprisingly wealthy looking house. This whole street had quite a few really upscale looking houses. Also, notice at the end when we see a close up shot of Sarah's skates, the address written on them is for Valiana Drive, the real street address of the house, just with a different town name written afterwards. And that's basically it. That's what I have to show and tell about adventures and babysitting. But as always, I'd like to hear some feedback from you viewers. Did you find this video to be interesting, helpful? Does it make you want to visit these locations? or do you know of more information I should have included? Please leave it all in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of my videos, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. I would love to have you. Thank you.